Our film is intended to be a report to the public and show how your tax dollars have been spent, to show the operation of the department and literally to take you to jail. Here is the Marion County Jail built back in 1892 to accommodate 150 inmates. Now the population at the institution averages about 450 each day. This houses the law enforcement division as well. And the third function of the department, the civil office, is located in the Marion County Courthouse. This division of the department was made back in 1955 for better administration. Each division operates separately but is directly responsible to the sheriff. And here is Sheriff Robert O'Neill at one of his executive staff meetings held once each month for the purpose of ironing out administrative problems and to plan future activities. Sitting alongside Sheriff O'Neill is his executive officer, Major Robert Shields. Both Sheriff O'Neill and Major Shields are career police officers. The sheriff having been a former Indiana State Police superintendent, and Major Shields also having served for some 18 years with that department. At the left is Captain Francis Hawkins, the chief jailer, and by his side is Captain Robert F. Elliott, the chief civil deputy. They head the other two divisions of the department while Major Shields is responsible for the law enforcement section. Pictured now are the law enforcement lieutenants, Lieutenant Lee Eads, Lieutenant William Chance, and Lieutenant Alvin French. Then comes Sergeant Thomas Hughes, Safety Sergeant Fred Staggs, and here on the left is Sergeant John Mays of the Civil Office. Head Matron Mildred Lynch and Sergeant Dave Morgan of the Jail Division. We'll now try to picture for you some of the activities of the law enforcement section. Here is a typical deputy of the department, Marvin Pope, using a hand mic to report to the radio dispatcher. Pope was the winner of the VFW Award for Valor in 1959. The officers are lined up for an inspection of uniforms and equipment. These inspections also are monthly propositions. Here is the sheriff looking over the uniforms of the men, as one of his chief requirements is that the uniforms be kept neat and clean to make the best possible appearance to the public. His aides walk along with him to note any infractions. And here is an inspection of the sidearms, as the care of the weapons also is highly important. Major Shields inspects Deputy Leroy Thompson, a former Butler University and professional football player. Here's the law enforcement section, in ranks, getting some instructions. The equipment of one of the safety vehicles comes in for scrutiny. On the right is Safety Sergeant Fred Staggs, and opposite him is Deputy Dick Geyer, who conducts the traffic safety school. A camera, fire extinguisher, a first aid kit, and tape for measurement at accidents. And there's also a respirator carried in this unit along with the numerous other safety devices. All of this equipment, of course, costs money, and it must be carefully maintained. This comes through taxes and is appropriated by the county council for the department's budget. Garage Superintendent James Powers is inspecting the vehicle. A close watch is kept on the tires as the road patrol must make several emergency runs during each tour of duty. And now the inspection turns to the boats and water safety equipment. Two of these boats are new ones with 18 horsepower engines and can be used also in time of floods. You're now looking at the jail division vehicles, the 45-passenger jail bus, which makes two trips each week to the Indiana State Farm with prisoners and also is used to transport juries. 
It serves, too, on occasion, as a portable jail. One of the important parts of the department's service to the public is the operation of the humane trucks. Three trucks cover Marion County daily, picking up stray dogs or vicious animals and transporting them to the pound. Here's the investigation section of the department, the detective branch, so to speak. There are seven men in this section in charge of Sergeant John Lanahan. Their cars also must have special equipment, such as fingerprint kits, cameras, and the like. Sergeant Lanahan holds the kit as Major Shields carries on the inspection. And now we move over to the civil office fleet. These deputies serve the various orders, some 10,000 a month, of the 19 courts in Marion County. Summonses, orders to appear, and so forth. Lieutenant Pat Pollock of the civil office stands at the right of the picture. He receives from the sheriff a bundle of these writs to be served by the men. The law enforcement group, Road Patrol, gets a briefing from the sheriff. These are the men who patrol some 1,400 miles of Marion County roads 24 hours a day, watching for violators, assisting in accidents, and doing hundreds of other police tasks. In the background, you can see the law enforcement cars. There are 21 vehicles in this part of the fleet, and many of these must be replaced at the end of each year. On the right, you'll see the civil office fleet Altogether, there are 42 vehicles used by the department. Now we'll take a closer look at the various men and their cars. The station wagons used for transporting prisoners to the hospital or to the various institutions to which they have been committed, as this also is a duty charged to the sheriff's department. And now a closer picture of the men in the civil office. The sheriff requires that these cars also be kept as clean and in as good a condition as is possible to keep them. Now let us consider the operation of the law enforcement division, the one division whose functions are most seen by the public. The radio, of course, is a vital part of this operation. Here's dispatcher Ronnie Bryant transmitting to a department car. And in the background is young Bob O'Neill getting training as a civil clerk with the department during the college vacation period. The dispatch goes to a car, and this deputy is able to transmit to another car. The radio equipment also includes pack sets or walkie-talkies, which can be used between cars or the station, provided they are within range. The PBX operator, Margaret Rickey, handles thousands of calls a month, many of which are emergencies, sending patrol cars speeding to the scene. Case reports on all calls which require investigation are made out by the dispatcher and then filled in by the deputies after their tour of duty. Here's a direct alarm from one of the county's suburban banks, and there are several under the department's jurisdiction. When this alarm trips, it calls for immediate attention. A teletype is in direct communication with the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, whereby a license of a suspected car or a stolen car can be checked in a matter of seconds. Often, those can be mighty important seconds when a chase or some major crime is involved.
Here is the audio-visual aid equipment of the safety division. Slide projector, pack set, movie projector. This section also uses model signs for an intensive grade and highway school instruction program. Deputy Don Heberton talked before thousands of youngsters in Marion County in this program during the past year. This has proven highly successful in the matter of teaching our youngsters good safety habits. Another innovation in the department is a photography darkroom, where pictures made at an accident or crime scene may be developed without delay. Sergeant Lanahan has shown mixing a batch of developer and Deputy Harold Goodman of the investigation section works with an enlarger. The sign you see is used in mugging of prisoners arrested by the department's deputies to be kept in the criminal file. Records also are a very important part of the operation of law enforcement division. Clerk Helen LeBon is shown filing a criminal arrest card. She also keeps records on traffic arrests and their activities of the deputies. Marjorie Sears has among her duties the issuing of gun permits and extreme care must be taken in the handling of these. The room is also equipped with a copying machine for providing copies of accident forms and other information for insurance investigators. Also on file in this section are several thousand case reports for future reference. The department handled more than 8,000 of these last year. Now for a demonstration of the radar equipment. This car just sped through a 20-mile school zone on Post Road in uh, eastern Marion County. It's caught in the radar screen. The speed is much too fast. 62 miles an hour in a school zone. Operator Don Oakey radios ahead to his partner by way of the pack set and the motorist will be flagged down. About a quarter of a mile away, Deputy Don Roush hears 62 on that black Buick and he waves the driver to a stop. The driver is advised of his speed and asked to show his driver's license. This is scanned for validity and to get the identification of the operator. He's given an arrest ticket by the deputy and ordered into a magistrate's court to explain his haste in this well-marked zone. And now we see the result of not obeying those same speed laws. An accident on road 136 which claimed the lives of four persons last May. The result of too much speed and some drinking while driving. The department's deputies are called to the scene to assist the injured, collect the belongings of the victims, get the battered cars off the highway and get traffic rolling again. Afterward comes the necessary accident reports and a trip to the coroner's office for an inquest. 47 persons met death on Marion County highways last year in accidents such as these, most of which would have been preventable had the operators of one car or the other been driving at a safe speed. There's the speedometer locked at 85 miles an hour. And here's the sad result. The department has long stressed water safety and has made many arrests for swimming in unguarded pools and pits. Still, it exists. Now we'll have a demonstration of what happens when one of these venturesome persons fails to come up after such a swim. One of the boats is kept on the east side of the county at the Warren Township number one station and another on the west side at Wayne Township Fire Headquarters to be handy for a mishap in that area. A third is at department headquarters. The boat carrier is already radioed for help, and as he arrives, other cars follow him to the scene. The boat is launched in preparation for dragging with grapple hooks for the body of the victim.
You'll notice that the deputies practice what they teach, the use of safety jackets. The boat takes off to the place where the victim was last seen, and a grapple hook is placed over the side. This dragging process may continue for hours before it's all over. The department has hit hard at obscene and smutty literature. Here are some of the magazines confiscated at drugstores and at distributors' warehouses. Gambling on pinball machines also has been a target. Here are some of the confiscated machines are being broken up with a sledgehammer and they're burned in an incinerator behind the jail. Here's another section of the law enforcement division. The apprehension of a car in which the subject was seen carrying a gun and believed dangerous. The part of the subject is played by one of our men, but the deputy is Dave Kopp, who has gone through this same bit on other occasions with a genuine article. Deputy Kopp takes no chances after stopping the car. Come out backward with your arms up, he orders, and you'll note that he uses his own car as a shield. Notice that he places the bandit on the car off balance. He's already radioed for help when he began the chase, and here another deputy runs up to assist him. One covers the bandit, and Deputy Cop removes the pistol from his pocket. He then completes his search to make sure that he has no other weapons concealed. Now he's ready to bring him in. On your knees and swing your arms out in front of your body, he orders. This is preparatory to putting on the handcuffs. Now he takes his belt and fastens it behind the subject so he cannot raise his hands. He'll be taken in by one man as the other car will not want to leave the district. And away he goes to jail. Here is the jail desk where most of the business concerning inmates is transacted. Sergeant Dave Morgan shows one of the prisoners packets which contains everything concerning the man during his stay in the institution. This record system started in 1955 and is a big improvement over anything ever practiced in the past and gives an absolute check on the prisoners. Now you're actually in jail. This is a shot from the third range looking down into the booking area. Here is what is commonly known as the big room where inmates serving jail time are quartered. Looks a little like an army dormitory.